We are back for the seventh season of the Virtual Street Championship. And what better way to start the season with one of the world's most iconic corners, Silverstones, Maggots and Beckets. This high speed section requires high commitment and extreme precision, as any hesitation or wheel drop will result in lost momentum and ultimately low score from the judges. So I am excited to be back competing in the VDC. It requires a massive amount of attention, a massive amount of precision to compete in this high level a set of cars to drift esports championship. That being said, we're back again for another season and this time we're going to be competing in the S15 once again. We did have some plans to drive in another chassis, but things never worked out, and so we're back to old faith. Anyway, without further ado, let's head straight into this event and let's go straight into qualifying. All right, so here we go. This is it. This is going to be our second qualifying run. As our first run, we got 95.3, and this run, we're going to try and better that. So here we go. Flick it into the first inner outer clip. We'll transition here to inner clip one, out to outer clip three, and we'll transition aggressively. In this section right here, you have to carry a massive momentum as. Well, at this point, you're already doing 100 kilometers, 120 kilometers drift speed. So it's high speed, high momentum, and requiring massive precision. As you can see, we transition into the final wall as we cross that finish line. And wow, what a run there from uh, from myself. And yeah, that got us a 96.3 in qualifying. Qual got us fourth overall and uh, ready for our top 32 battle. Now, that top 32 battle was against Kevin Stump. Kevin Stump driving the Chris Fosberg Nissan Z. And obviously this season, uh, a lot of new cars, a lot of new drivers. And so this particular run, we're going to do a split screen as, uh, yeah, the end result for this was quite interesting. So as you can see right here, we have a really good, decent lead line, but Kevin is right there with us. And to be honest, Kevin's lead run is looking pretty solid as well. I didn't really take many risks. You can see Kevin is actually closer in areas, but not really match angle, match angle matching, whereas we're doing the opposite. We are angle matching, but not getting as close. And that run ended up going one more time. So going against Kevin Stubb another time and this run was all to get that win obviously to move into the top 16 which was crucial to be able to get a good result here for the first round of VDC and as you can see we leave the start line and as we initiate in again we're keeping a bit of a gap on Kevin he can't really he's struggling to keep up with us and as we transition through the first clip, couple of clipping points we're really uh, doing a good job here in the lead position as we transition through and this time we're much closer to Kevin really staying with him all the way through and as we get into the uh, last couple of other clips, as you, see, as you can see, we're just bettering our chase run here than what we did the first time and even bettering Kevin's uh, chase run as well. And that ultimately gave us the win and moving on into the top 16. Now straight into the top 16, we have Dimitri Mitten in his Mark IV Supra. And this again, another va a battle with a split screen as again, another interesting situation happened here. And as you can see, we flick in nice and aggressively in the lead run. You can see from our lead run, we're doing everything that we need to do here. Whereas obviously Dimitri is only really after catching up to us right here. And as you can see, he transitions through on the left hand side as he hits us on the back wheel. And that kind of makes us wobble a small bit. But look at the contact. He hits us on the transition. Makes us understeer. And crash into that wall. And uh, as you can see from the right side. We made no mistakes. That gave us the win. Obviously Dimitri's mistake was a, a massive mistake that he made. My chase run on the second run. And uh, we just had to take it easy. And just make sure we get across that finish line. Which is exactly what we did. We move on into the top 8. And the top 8. Here we are. This time it's against Samuel Kuti. And uh, a newcomer to the series this season, a rookie driver in his Escuco and this is an S15. As you can see, we can flick it in through clipping point one again, transition through, and Kuti is right there with us. He's pushing us through it as we now transition into the final, well, the super long outside zone, not the final one. He's right there with us, really pushing us along. Again, this track, you can't really aim for proximity. All you can do is angle match and try and get as close as possible. And Samuel is doing a very good job here, really putting us on edge, really having put us into a position that we're going to have to push hard and this is what we're going to have to do in our chase run as you can see as the lights tick down we're getting ready to set here Sam and Cootie to lead in us Heinze and as you can see as we leave the start line Cootie's going to flick it in very very aggressively here but we're going to be right there with him we give him a little tap on the door to say hello what's up so he's transitioning through inner clip one out to outer clip two and transition into the final or final along outside zone once again and we're right there with him super close in the transition again really angle matching he pulls a bit of a gap on us here but we close it back up again for the final transition and really say to samuel we're here what's up and uh yeah you know what the judges agreeing with us in that scenario and giving us the win and moving on into the top four
And of course, in typical old fashion, we up against Tikan Poleski, and this time we will be chasing a Tikan. Tikan qualifying number two, and obviously that giving him a, a better spot in qualifying, so he's be flicking in aggressively again right there with Tikan. But as you can see, we get too close, we have to give too much of a gap, and we lose the proximity to Tikan. And as we have a few a divey transitions behind him, we just can't stay with him, as he just has that little bit of edge of speed and momentum throughout the whole run, and we don't really close the gap. And even on the final transition here, we finally get with him, but it's just too late to say, the, to kind of give that pressure to Tikan. And, you know, he's he's got the upper hand here. All he's got to do is get a very good, consistent chase. But, you know, it's still all to play for here. You know, if Tikan makes one tiny mistake, he's out of it. And so, obviously, in this scenario, we got to do our best lead run. And that's exactly what we're going to try and do here. As you can see, a massive flick through the inner clip two, carrying huge angle through the outer clip three, and transition aggressively into outside zone 4, really pushing us is Tikan Poleski as we transition now into final zone 5 and this is a Tikan really matching angle right there, proximity exactly doing what he has to do as a final transition, yeah, a bit too late for us there unfortunately not really getting um, the chase run we needed and Tikan knew exactly that, he had the upper hand after that first run and he really pushed it to us and of course he gets the win, he moves on into the finals and we up against Zach O'Sullivan for the third fourth playoff and here we go for the third four playoff is against Zach O'Sullivan he's marked for super Zach finishing third last season behind us as we finish second and as we flick it in aggressively with him really pushing it on the initiation but he has a bit more pace through the transition as I'm sent to punch the cone in the chase run and now uh, we miss time the miss up the timing of the transition dirt drop a tiny bit just lose a bit of proximity and as we transition here we really uh, stick it to him for the final transition to really show what we can do and of Unfortunately, we have a massive spin and <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. We get a zero for that. That's obviously not what you want to do here. Zach has a massive upper hand here. And as you can see, we leave the start line. And unfortunately, in a scenario like this, Zach is all in Zach's hands here. We have to do the best lead run that we could possibly do. That's exactly what we're going to do is we're going to flick it in hard. But Zach just needs to stay there with us and not score a zero. As you can see, he transitions into the outside zone four. Zach is keeping a bit of a gap here. He's not taking any chances here. He has the edge. He more or less has the win. And all he has to do is just get across that finish line. And as we transition one last time to the zone, we really push out wide to the, the wall. And yeah, Zach getting that third place podium. Uh, we missing out obviously that big mistake that we made with the spin. Very unlike me to make it unfortunately. And I don't know what, what it was for that particular run. But I just could not get the car to handle right all, all this event. And so I think we were lucky to be honest to get a top four uh, result in the end. But obviously... But obviously, Zach getting that edge over us and getting third place on the podium. So that is it for the first round of the Virtual Championship. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will be missing rounds two, unfortunately. But we will be back for round three. And I'm super excited to be making these videos once again. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow uh, the YouTube channel and all of our social medias. And obviously, comment down below. What do you think of this event? Was it a good event? Was it a bad event? What do you think of the Silverstone layout? I think it's a good one. Thanks. Goodbye.